Good day. This is Clayton Braun with Alliance Technology Partners. Today I would like to discuss uh, troubleshooting long scan times uh, with Akinetics Web Vulnerability Scanner. This is from an actual scan performed against an old .NET Nuke release. Um, we use this in our class as an example uh, for working through long scans. Um, you'll see here it's uh, what 11 million and some odd estimated number of requests for a current scan will complete in more than 1,328 days. Now in all fairness, uh, the uh, Akinetics was estimating this based on the initial uh, pages that were being scanned. Uh, I think this scan took uh, close to a little less than a week. Um, and that was before reducing duplication and uh, tweaking the scan. Now, this is considered all things equal that we don't have network performance issues and uh, database issues in the back end. Uh, and I do want to mention this. Acnetics provides great articles on their site covering this topic. Uh, one FAQ from a while back discusses understanding the correlation between response times and the number of requests. Uh, suggesting that scanning can take from minutes to several hours, I would extend this description to several days in some cases. Um, it just depends on a lot of factors. Now, um, using that understanding of the response times for the pages and the, uh, the number of pages with the number of requests, uh, so we have variations uh, in these pages. Um, also, there's some development issues that come in there too that, that should be addressed. Uh, an older blog article uh, specifies that factors at play in long response times are you know, web server performance, uh, database performance. Uh, bandwidth and network performance considerations, and then WAF considerations. So if you have a web application firewall, there's some things to consider there that extend the, the response time or may get in the way of some of the vulnerabilities being tested. Um, and from a more recent blog posting, uh, they add the following to that list, which is the size of the website um, and the number of vulnerability checks, as well as the Acnetic server performance. Now I go back to that number of vulnerability checks that used to be not as, not as much of a factor uh, that has increased. We have multiple thousands of known vulnerabilities that are being tested against. So that does increase the time and you can break that down. Now, if you're looking for a compliance report, you want that to a single report. Maybe that's not something that works for you uh, to break these pieces uh, down as far as the, the, the vulnerabilities you're actually scanning for or for instance, breaking the site down. Now they do offer a number of recommendations. Um, one that I just mentioned, which breaking the scan to smaller size. Um, this is very helpful, um, you know, and saving the crawler data. This is something I mentioned in another video. If you are breaking a site down into pieces, that you want to have your crawler uh, data intact, the entire crawl, and then you can select portions within that crawl. Don't crawl a single portion of the site and then scan. There are there are parameters that are. Uh, declared in other portions of a site that affect other pieces. So you, you don't want to have a partial crawl. You want a full crawl and then scan based on that. Uh, please look at the other video uh, if you have questions uh, regarding that. Um, and then select specific scan profiles. Uh, so if you're trying to focus in on uh, specific profiles, which vulnerabilities you're scanning against, um, don't scan, rescan the entire application for vulnerabilities that were fixed. It's a good, good suggestion as well. Um, however, that doesn't apply when you're trying to get a scan and report in its entirety. Uh, a lot of times you want to get a complete report and you want to be able to get it within a manageable amount of time. And you know, based on the size of the site, that could take longer than you would want. Um, another thing they focus on is monitoring the average response time. And then, you know, when you're dealing with the average response time, that tells you that something's going on with the site that's taking a while. And I mentioned database performance and they mentioned database performance as well, web server performance. A lot of times you make requests to a web server and that web server uh, is then handing that request off to a data to a database on the back end and you maybe aren't hitting the performance limits on that on that database um, but you're sending a single thread operation in many cases especially with SQL based databases um, and that can take a while to come back and increase your response times uh, which then increases the scan time um, something that's helpful if you go into the knowledge base uh, inside of Acunetics, you often see, uh, you know, under knowledge base, there'll be a listing of the number of the, the longest response times. Uh, this is helpful for kind of digging into those pages. Uh, another suggestion they made was to, you know, use the scheduler to uh, scan during off-peak hours, um, and that is a great suggestion. Uh, it, it does help, you know, if you're not dealing with resource issue though, um, then maybe that isn't the right fix for you. Um, what I'm getting into is more uh, along the lines of understanding 
the website you're scanning. Um, so looking for the inputs, understanding the requests, why are there so many requests? Are there duplications? Um, there was another mention that I, I brought up, which was the number of parallel connections. Uh, when you're dealing with number of parallel connections, you can come into your scan settings and you can see um, under our HTTP options, limit number of parallel connections, one to 25. There is a set limit at 25 right now. Uh, the default is 10. I would suggest ramping this up if you're not seeing a performance issue on the web server based on the number of parallel connections. Um, that will increase the number of connections that are running simultaneously and thereby, uh, in theory, increasing the speed or improving the, the speed of the, the scan. So let's go back. Um, I wanted to also mention another thing was the development considerations. So when you're working through scans um, and you find that certain, certain sites or certain pages are taking a long time to come back, whether it be the query that's being sent to the database in the back end or the way that the page is structured, maybe there's a lot of inputs. Uh, developers should consider this not for the benefit of the pen testers that are internal, that are scanning the site and saying, we can't finish this in the window. Uh, it's for the fact that you may have other scanners on the outside uh, maliciously attacking your site. And if they find something that could uh, increase the number of requests and then slow down your, your database uh, or your web server, uh, it's a consideration, it's a finding in our, in our opinion. So um, you want to make sure from the standpoint from the developers that they understand that uh, of large queries or uh, sheer number of, of inputs or variations can affect not only your time on the pen testing, but also affects how the performance is on the server and the backend database. And that plays into quite a bit. Um, so additionally, what I wanted to point out was there, from that original report that I showed, uh, this was actually a list of the top 10 or top 11 requests that came back. And we saw files with the most inputs, and we saw that uh, on this one page, we had 655,000 requests. Here we had uh, 471,000, and we have actually multiple with 471,000. So this tells us we are looking possibly at duplication. And this is where it's helpful to work with your, with your developers. Uh, they could tell you, uh, uh, give you a better idea of whether or not this is actually duplication. I would, I'm willing to bet that this is, and actually we determined that it was. And you see the same thing repeat itself with 361,928 requests. We should use this in our class a lot as an example, and we work through uh, our clients uh, results to help find duplication. Another factor here though is the inputs and let's say there is not a lot of duplication but you have a lot of inputs and a lot of requests. Uh, we like to go ahead on this uh, scan results page right click and you'll see there's an inputs by default that's not selected uh, you see that I have it selected this lets me look into a specific site and understand that okay this is the number of inputs I'm dealing with on this site. Um, then you could go into the inputs tab and you can get some more details. Um, so aside from duplication, now we start looking for the number of variants um, for a particular page. And this is where we try to understand and work with the developers to determine if there is um, some values or some uh, form inputs that don't need to be tested. So if we're declaring a color or we're declaring a style or something along those lines that regardless of what input we select, it's going to yield the same result. So we work with our developers, if possible, to understand those inputs. And then we can go ahead and spe specify under inputs a specific input. Now, keep in mind, this all comes into play with are we doing a quick, a heuristic, or an extensive scan? And we, we cover this in training, of course, where you know the quick is going to try the first input and move on. Uh, heuristic may try a subset. And then the extensive scan is going to try all possible vulnerabilities up to the number that's set in your number of variations that would be found under your crawling options. Here we have the maximum number of variations set at 50. Um, we like to get all the variations as long as they're appropriate. Um, if we're looking for uh, building a car on a website, we would specify color. Do we need to try all the colors? No. Um, and at that point, there's areas that we may exclude. Uh, there is a way to edit under settings XML uh, to specify when you're doing heuristic or extensive scanning to then move forward uh, saying I'm going to try only a single input for this input um, and then try all variations on the others. Um, we call that selective quick scanning uh, for lack of a better term. 
Um, but that allows us to reduce uh, the number of requests that are being performed and then increasing the speed of our scan. Um, there's a lot of other uh, helpful tips that we can provide you uh, in our training. Um, it's uh, too long for a short little video like this, but uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch the video. Please look for additional videos and other content on our website. Uh, it's www.alliancewebsecurity.com. Have a great day.